it's time for another painting tutorial. I'm back. This week we are returning to uh, World War II German camouflage because that was a really popular video. Uh, last time we did the pretty common splinter pattern, which you see in a lot of uh, Wehrmacht units. And uh, this week we are going to be moving on to the hard stuff, which is SS camouflage. Uh, they had a lot of variety, um, as opposed to the Wehrmacht that only had a couple patterns. And pretty much all of them are really complicated. I don't actually do very much uh, SS stuff because I'm a little, like, I don't know, the whole thing. They're, they're kind of a little bit evil, if you, I'm sorry, but they are. So I kind of always feel a little uncomfortable doing them. But I know there are a lot of people who are interested in um, playing with SS units and they have their uses and the patterns are difficult and so having some ideas on how to paint them is useful. So this week the pattern we're going to be working on is the infamous P pattern. It's a whole bunch of little dots. It's kind of overwhelming if you look at it. So we're going to look at how we can, you know, make that work in 28 millimeter. Um, and for that we'll be using this little guy. He is it's just sort of a general figure, um, but he can easily be made to be wearing a camouflage uniform. So we'll be painting both his pants and his jacket in the pea pattern. Uh, this is a foundry figure from the Bold Action Range. It's one of their very early figures from the beginning of the Bold Action Range. So he's a little, I don't know if you can see, he's a little bit sort of different looking than some of their later figures, but he should do very well for this. He's already been base coated with gray enamel and I've already painted his skin. In this tutorial, we're mostly gonna be focusing on the pea pattern and I'm not gonna be spending much time talking about other elements of the equipment because I talked about that some when I was painting the Fallschirmjäger um, in the last tutorial and I'll probably be revisiting it again so we're not going to focus too much on the equipment otherwise. Uh, as I mentioned in my last camo video, if you're painting camo it's incredibly important that you have some kind of guide or resource, some kind of painting reference. Uh, last time I recommended a book by Dan S. Peterson. He has written some really good books about camo and I'm going to recommend that book again except this is a different one. This one is specifically SS camo pattern so for this kind of work you really want that. And it has uh, photos of actual uniforms being worn by modern people so you get to really see how the colors look and really see how they look in real life. So that's what we're going to basically be using as a reference. Well, I'm going to be using, you can find a lot of other good books that do the same thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with this. And remember, we're not going for complete accuracy here because with camouflage pads, the name of the game is reducing it to, you know, believable elements, creating an overall believable effect, but we're not trying to 100% recreate exactly how it looked or, you know, get the colors exactly right because it's just, it's just not possible at this scale. As a matter of fact, if you tried to make the dots, the P pattern to scale for this, you, they'd become microscopic. You wouldn't be able to see them. So it's really all about the overall look and that's what you have to keep telling yourself when you're doing these camouflage painting um, projects. Okay, so without further ado, Let's get to the figure. So the first step is to put a base coat on the uniform, all the area that we're going to paint the camouflage on. And for this, I am using um, Vallejo German Camouflage Medium Brown. Uh, it's really nice because Vallejo has a lot of colors that are specifically designed for painting these pesky camouflage patterns. So I really recommend if you're going to do this, you get their paint range. It'll save you a lot of trouble and a lot of color mixing. Once the brown base coat is dry, then go ahead and uh, give the whole uh, uniform a heavy wash using the Citadel Nuln Oil. Once the wash is dry, I'm going to take the um, German Camouflage Medium Brown and I'm going to thin it down and I'm going to kind of go back and reapply that over the whole figure, well, at least everywhere except in the creases and recesses, sort of to bring it back up to a higher color. Then once I've done that everywhere, I'm going to go ahead and apply um, a highlight color to this and I'm going to do that by taking the German uh, Camouflage Medium Brown and mixing it with Vallejo German Camouflage Light Brown, which is another color we're going to be using later on in this tutorial, but it's also a great way to lighten the medium brown up a little bit more. Um, and I'm then going to apply that and use it to highlight the whole uniform just as I would if we weren't going to paint camouflage. Um, this pre-highlighting is something you can do before you paint the camouflage just to you know make it a little easier later on because once the camouflage is on there it's gonna be really hard to highlight it but this will give you a little of that 
uh, depth and you have more control at this stage. And I'm also g going to highlight it a little higher after applying that light color just by mixing in just a hint of um, boneyard to get an even lighter shade and put out that on the extreme creases as well. Once the uniform base is ready, we can move on to painting the camouflage itself. And the first thing you want to do is put some sort of large areas of color down because that's what you'll see if you look at the P pattern that you have some sort of big um, areas of color and then lots of little dots over top. I am applying all these dots using toothpicks. This is a tip I saw somewhere else and it works really, really well. It's really the easiest way to do it. Um, and there's three colors we're going to be using for the camouflage. We are going to be using um, the um, German Camouflage Dark Green, uh, the German Camouflage Bright Green, and then um, Vallejo Brown Sand. Um, there is actually a German Camouflage Light Brown. I am not going to be using it though because it turns out at this scale it really is not high contrast enough and it does not look, it doesn't give the same effect that you would be wanting to get from, you know, this pattern. Um, when you're doing this, make sure that you put the least amount of the um, light green down because that occurred with the least frequency on this pattern. Once you have the big areas down, you're going to just start applying little dots all over the uniform. Um, the distribution is not even. There's a huge variety in these uniforms. Some of them appeared very light. Some of them appeared very dark. They had greater concentrations of light colors or dark colors. So don't feel like there's one way to do this. Just make sure that the bright green is used least. You'll see the light brown and the dark green appearing the most frequently in these patterns. Um, so yeah, keep applying dots all over the uniform until most of the surface area is covered because it's a very dense pattern. There's not very many areas that are left empty in this particular pattern. And you're also going to want to go back in with that medium camouflage brown that we used as the base of the uniform. And you're going to want to apply a dots that over the very large concentrated areas of color because it also appeared as spots on the uniform, but you only really see them obviously on areas of color that are not um, the base color, if that makes any sense. Once you've uh, finished putting a nice even distribution of dots everywhere, you can think about doing a little bit of highlighting. And I know that sounds insane, so don't try to highlight everything. Just look for areas where a lot of light would be hitting. And then uh, what I did was basically mix some boneyard or flesh in this case into all of the colors to lighten them up and then I either with a brush or actually a toothpick works even better just kind of go back over the dots that you want to appear lighter using those lighter mixed colors and and don't do this everywhere look for like the tops of sleeves or with the, to the tops of creases and you know around the edges of the garment and you might want to uh, lighten those areas up just a little bit um, like I said, less is more. You don't have to do it everywhere and focus on the, like, the big patches of color because you'll see those highlights the most obviously in those locations. Another good way to get extra contrast between the light and dark areas of the pattern is to add some shading. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm using the Citadel Agrax Earth Shade Wash and I'm applying that sort of in the recessed areas of the uniform and around underneath the edges of the clothes and building that up to get some extra color. Since the camouflage is basically done, we can work on other areas of his uniform. And I'm gonna start out by base coating some of those areas. I'm first gonna work on the sort of you know, German green areas of the uniform, which include his spats or putties, whatever you want to call them, his hat, um, his helmet, he, and he's got sort of a metal mess tin that he's wearing on his belt. And I'm going to base coat those all with the way extra dark green. Then I'm going to work on base coating the black or dark gray areas of his uniform. And those are going to include his boots, um, his belt, and sort of the ammo pouches that he has on his belt. And then he's also got another sort of metal mess tin that he's wearing, and that's going to be black, and also the top of his canteen flask. Um, and, and additionally, on his hat, he's got some insignia, and the, the, the sort of the background of those is black. And also, he has black epaulets on his shoulders. 
and um, those were actually not standard to this uniform, but they were often added. It was pretty common for people to put epaulets on these uh, camo uniforms, and this uniform has them, so I am going to add them in. I am also going to uh, paint sort of that sack, I guess it's mess sack, or I'm not sure exactly what it holds, and the bottom of it is a canteen, and I'm going to use um, foundry butter fudge for that. I'm just going to use the triad, all three colors, and apply them to those areas. Now I'm going to start highlighting those uh, green areas. I have darkened them further first using a, a non oil wash and that kind of prepares the base. And I am going to take thin down a Vallejo uh, German uh, field gray, and which is actually a very green color, so I don't know why it's called gray. And I'm going to start using that to highlight the helmet, hat, and um, putties. Actually, on the helmet, I want it to stay darker than the rest, so I am going to actually use, the highlight I'm going to use on that is a mix of the field gray and extra dark green from the last step, but on the putties and the hat and on his mess tin, I'm just going to first highlight it with just plain old uh, field gray, um, and then I'm going to start making some lighter shades by mixing some boneyard into that. And I'm going to make sort of a medium or sort of a medium highlight color. And then I'm going to make a really high highlight color with quite a lot of boneyard in it. And I'm going to use that to sort of apply that, those colors to the sort of the seams and edges of these garments and of the helmet and also um, around the seams and edges of his hat. And once the green areas are completely done, I am going to start working on the black areas of the uniform. Uh, I will be highlighting those first with a mixture of black and foundry uh, charcoal gray. And that's sort of a very deep highlight. And I'm going to apply that all to all of the black items. And then I'm going to take just plain um, medium charcoal gray. And I'm going to also apply that to all of the areas, but uh, very carefully. Um, and then that is all, as far as I'm probably going to go with things like the top of the canteen and the sort of tin that he's wearing because those are metal and I don't want them highlighted very far. Um, for the pouches and his boots, however, I am going to be taking uh, some medium stone and I will be using that to add an extra highlight to the sort of the edges and tops of the shoes and edges around the um, ammo pouches because those are leather and I want them to look a little bit shiny. Uh, I will even be taking like a medium arctic gray color and applying that even more sparingly in those leather areas to get some real sort of reflection. And I also will do that just along the top of his belt. You can hardly see his belt but just in the back a little bit. I'll put some light gray just along that edge. I'm then really quickly going to take some bay brown from Foundry and use that as a base coat for all the brown areas of the figure, which are going to include uh, the, the wood of his gun, um, the strap on his gun, and then also just his hair, which I have painted earlier, and also a few little leather straps which are holding his various um, pouches and, um, and tins closed. I'll go back over these later and differentiate the gun from the leather areas. I'm now going to be doing two things. I'm going to paint the leather areas, which are his um, gun strap and then the straps on sort of his his, his flasks and, um, can, and you know containers on his belt. And I'm going to use just the Foundry Rawhide Triad for that, real simple. Once I have done that, I'm going to start painting the metal areas or making a base for the metal areas. And I will be using a mix of sort of black, uh, charcoal gray, and um, Vallejo natural steel to do that. And that's basically going to be his gun barrel, the, the, his, um, the, 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 the bolt action, I guess, for lack of a better word, on the gun. And then also uh, a little bit of the buttons on his uniform and on top of his epaulets are going to get that. I'm also going to be distressing a little bit the um, edges of his metal um, um, his metal boxes because that was common those got the paint got chipped off and dinged on you can also do that around the edge of his helmet I'm gonna apply just some little spots and chipping with this dark color on to those areas as well and later on I will go back and highlight this 
Now I'm going to finish up the metal areas on him using Vallejo Natural Steel, and that's going to be on his gun parts, the chips and dings on his hat and tins, and also on his buttons. Another thing I did, which I did not show, was to highlight the gun, the wood on the gun, using chestnut dark and chestnut medium um, from Foundry. Also, do not forget to paint the insignia on his hat. We already put the black backgrounds there, but I used stone and arctic gray medium to sort of indicate the eagle and the totem cup that he wears because he's SS. Additionally, there should be stripes on the edges of his epaulets, and that color is determined by whatever unit you want him to, or well, not what unit, but what type of guy you want him to be. I have put red bands on my epaulets, which would basically make him artillery. And then one final detail you'll want is to probably wash your gun barrel with some um, Citadel blue wash because that will make it look more like the blued steel that you had on guns. So that just about finishes up our SS soldier here wearing his pea pattern uniform. Um, I have never painted pea pattern before this and I actually thought it was a lot easier than I expected. Um, I had learned about that sort of technique of using a toothpick elsewhere and I think it worked really well. It was actually quite easy to do this. Um, and it is a quite an intimidating looking pattern, but it actually comes together pretty well, I think, actually. Um, so I really do encourage you to give this one a try. This is at the second in my series of German camouflage uh, painting tutorials. My first one was on the splinter pattern, which I did on a Fallschirmjäger. So please check that out if you're interested in more. And I definitely plan to continue this series and do some other uh, German camouflage patterns and then maybe also some camouflage patterns from some other um, armies. So if you like this video, once again, uh, please like it below, um, subscribe to my channel, definitely share it with your friends because I'd love to have more subscribers and leave me comments and tell me what you like, what you don't like, uh, what you like to see next. And I would definitely really, really appreciate that. So until next time, uh, please have fun, uh, give this a try and you know, see what you can do with your own um, camouflaged units.